Hey internet friends! October 26, 2017 was supposed to be a day of closure. After President Donald Trump promised to release the remaining files about the 1963 assassination of President John F. Kennedy, after decades of being dismissively labeled conspiracy theorists, those who still had lingering questions about their president's mysterious assassination waited around all day yesterday for these files to be published on the National Archives. Only for the CIA, as well as the FBI, to delay until the last lingering moments of the deadline ultimately yielding in a partial release of these files. With President Trump approving of the withholding of the remaining documents for a 180-day period, citing national security and other concerns. But if the official narrative of JFK's assassination is that it was executed by one lone gunman, Lee Harvey Oswald, then what is the national security concern over the release of these files? Oswald is dead, rendering him unable to be a threat to national security. That is, unless we haven't been told the full story, and the real assassins who benefited from JFK's death are still out there. And furthermore, I pose this question to all of you who question JFK's assassination. Clearly, you believe that the American government is lying or omitting details. So why would you trust the government to disclose the truth in these files when the government constantly lies? Either way, it's good to stay informed and question everything. That's why today we're going to cover the top five surprising revelations in the newly released JFK files. Number one, a British newspaper received a mystery call minutes before JFK's assassination. In a memo from November 1963 to the FBI from CIA counterintelligence chief James Angleton, it was documented that the senior reporter for the Cambridge News in England told British security officials that 25 minutes before Kennedy was shot, an anonymous tipster telephoned and urged the reporter to call the American embassy in London for some big news. And then they hung up. After a deluded gunman assassinated President Kennedy, deluded gunman, gunman. Moving on to number two. The Soviets believed JFK's assassination was part of a conspiracy. Documents from 1966 state that the Soviets believed the assassination was part of an ultra-right conspiracy in the United States to effect a coup. They seem convinced that the assassination was not the deed of one man, but they believed the assassination was part of a carefully planned campaign, and they felt that those who were responsible for the assassination would use it as a means to stop negotiations with the Soviet Union, attack Cuba, and wage war. The document goes on to say that the Soviets feared the United States might launch a missile at the Soviet Union in the absence of President Kennedy's leadership. Number three, the JFK files point to a Jewish conspiracy. In interviews conducted after JFK's assassination, one person of interest claimed that the Jews were the backers behind his assassination, since they favored Lyndon B. Johnson. It should be noted that Jack Ruby's real last name was Rubenstein, a Jewish last name, and in addition to being charged for JFK's murder along with Oswald, he fatally shot Oswald, who, as most of you already know, claimed to be a patsy. Strike one on the Jewish conspiracy was that JFK was taking shots at the Federal Reserve. The Fed is run by families like the Rothschild family, who got their own Zionist State of Israel through the Balfour Declaration. I put an extra emphasis on the ish of the word Jewish because these elite families claim to be Jewish, but they are not. They are the synagogue of Satan. They never made the full conversion to Judaism. They simply stole the identity. If they did make the full conversion to Judaism, would they be funding both sides of the world wars? Ultimately leading to the genocide of millions of innocents. Strike two occurred in July of 1963, when President Kennedy demanded that the Israeli Prime Minister allow the US to inspect the Israeli nuclear facility at Daimona. And if the Prime Minister wouldn't allow this, the U.S. support of Israel would be seriously jeopardized. I want to correct what I stated before. He was vice president. Remember I said? He was vice president. Yes, I did when I mentioned about Adelaide Stevens. If he was vice president, there would never have been an assassination of our beloved president. Did you explain it again? Well, the answer is the man in office now. Number four. J. Edgar Hoover, the first director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation of the United States, said the public must believe Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. The document reads, The thing that I am concerned about is having something issued so we can convince the public that Oswald is the real assassin. Why would you choose the words convince and the real assassin if there was outstanding proof that Lee Harvey Oswald was 
the real assassin. What other convincing would the American public need? Apparently, the American public needed a lot of convincing, and still does to this day, as we move on to number five, our final revelation. The JFK files confirm that the CIA had over 40 journalists who were undercover agents. This was revealed in a document from 1977. So if that was in 1977, how many journalists do you reckon the CIA has now? From CNN to Fox News to the Washington Post. What do you reckon? A pretty good percentage? How many of your alternative news outlets are staffed by CIA Because journalists? he has been our chosen leader at a time in history when his character, his vision, and his quiet courage have enabled him to chart a course for us, a safe course for us, through the shoals of treacherous seas that encompass the world. And now that he is relieved of the almost superhuman burden we imposed on him, may he rest in peace. Who benefited from JFK's assassination? Not Lee Harvey Oswald, not the Soviet Union, probably not Cuba, definitely not the American people, but the Federal Reserve has more power than ever. The CIA is in nearly every foreign country along with American military bases. Johnson got to be president and shortly thereafter, the US entered the Vietnam War. And among those who benefited from the Vietnam War would be war criminal Henry Kissinger, who is still alive today and still holds quite a bit of power. The only way the disclosure of something that happened 54 years ago can still be a national security threat today is if those who assassinated JFK are still among the living. George H.W. Bush, whose presence has been established in Dallas the day of Kennedy's assassination, though Bush claimed not to remember where he was when Kennedy was murdered, went on to head the CIA, as well as become president of the United States. One would assume you'd need a sharp mind as well as a sharp memory for those jobs. It's pathetic that the American government had 50 years to prepare for the release of these files, only to allegedly wait until the last minute to delay them. But they must have been too busy distributing cocaine and staging coups in foreign countries and working around the clock to brainwash the American public through the media. I would have preferred to have watched a live stream from the White House lawn of our elected officials tossing these JFK files into a trash can fire, instead of listening to these tired excuses. JFK was our last president to stand up to the tyranny we have today. Was he a perfect man? No. But he was better than those who benefited from his death. They killed JFK, then they killed Robert Kennedy, then JFK Jr. They killed what America could have been. What do you think, internet friends? Did you learn anything new from these files? Let me know. As always, I look forward to your comments. Thank you so much for subscribing and supporting my channel on Patreon.